Hello, welcome to day one, two, three. This is Times and Seasons, uh, Timely Word and Prayer for day one, two, three, the 123rd day of the year. This is also the fourth day of the 18th week. The fourth day is the fourth of the fourth. The 18th week is the fourth week in the third seven weeks of the year. And day one, two, three is the fourth day within the fourth week in the third seven weeks of the year. So day one, two, three is a core fourth season day. It's a core fourth season day. Mm. So we look at the fourth day of creation the fourth day of creation to understand what this season is about. On the fourth day of creation, God made the luminaries. We have to say this over every week. We are going to hear about this. You know, every week we're going to talk about each day of creation. We're going to keep talking about it. And as we repeat it this way, it sinks and it becomes part of uh, what you know, or what, you know, you just grasp. So, the fourth day of creation, Genesis chapter 1, 14 to um, 19. You see, each time I talk about the creation narrative, because that is the basic. The creation narrative is the foundation. It's like introduction to the Bible. It's like table of contents for the Bible. Understanding the creation narrative is the key to understanding the placement of the books of the Bible. Every book is where it is according to the season it speaks to. And books of the Bible are where they are in the order of creation. It's a mystery. I can't explain it. I don't know how, but only that God wanted it to be so. That the Books of the Bible are in the order of creation. And then the chapters of the Bible, chapters, chapter numbers are assigned to narratives in the order of the creation story. That's the amazing thing. Uh, really, really amazing. That's amazing. So, so God made the luminaries on the seventh day. Then God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made the two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule um, to rule the night. He made the stars also. Then God said to then God said to them. Then God set them in the midst in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Yes, the evening and the morning. Why would God say the evening and the morning instead of the morning and the evening? We we like to say, yeah, the morning. We come from morning to the evening, but God talks from evening to morning. God walks from darkness to light. God walks from problem to solution. So God walks from evening to morning. We walk from morning till evening. Because where God finishes, we begin. So there is really no confusion. God walks from problem to solution. Then we take off from his solution. So though the Bible will say here, the evening and the morning were the first day. We say, well, our own first day is the morning and the evening because, you know, God finishes and then we start. <laughs> God finishes and then we start. 
So that's the thing, you know. So everything here you have the evening and the morning were the first day, the evening and the morning were the first day. You know, that's how God works. He walks from the darkness to the light. He walks from darkness to light. He walks from death to life. Eh? So, so on the on the on the fourth day, God made the luminaries, and the luminaries were guiding lights. He made them to give light, and to, I mean, let them be for light in the firmament. Let them give light on the earth. Um, let them uh, rule the day and uh, the night, and you know. So God made them to give light. The reason is this. On the fourth day, God made light. But he also made light on the first day. Why come back to light? Because spiritually, the fourth season is a fight back season for darkness. That's why you see temptations and trials and tribulations are recorded in the fourth chapters. Because it's like, that's the enemy's fight back season. So God gives lights again. Now he reinforces, there's a reinforcement. And so that's the way we ought to live in fourth season to reinforce. Reinforce light, reinforce prayer, reinforce whatever. Because it's a challenge, it's a spiritual hot season. Because on the fourth day of creation, that's when heat came into existence. As far as this earth is concerned. So, <clears throat> So day one, two, three is a spiritual hot season, but God has provided guiding lights to guide, to direct, to make sure that you do not stumble. Darkness does not kill, but darkness makes people to stumble. Darkness brings fear. Darkness brings confusion. Darkness causes people to stumble. Darkness hides the things you need. So God gives light in this season to guide you so you will not stumble, so you will not be afraid, so you will not be confused, and so you will not miss out on the things that God is giving to you. When God made this uh, luminary, he said, let them be for signs. Signs help you to see things. When rain, when, before rain falls, there's a sign, there are signs. The lightning, the thunder, the darkening of the clouds. Then you know Rain is on the way. Let them be for signs. So I pray that today will be a day of signs. You will not be taken unawares. You will see the signs. And you will not ignore the signs. You will see the signs. Signs, signs, signs. All right. So we're going to go into... Um, Psalm 1, 2, 3. Psalm 1, 2, 3. Unto you I lift up my eyes, O you who dwell in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their masters, as the eyes of a maid to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God, until he has mercy on us. Have mercy on us, O Lord. Have mercy on us, for we are exceedingly filled with contempt. This is a day of heat. I mentioned that the fourth season is a season of tests, trials, and tribulations. So often is a time when people need to pray and call upon God. Pray and call upon God. Have mercy. It's a time to pray and call upon God. Darkness seeks to overtake men in this season. Cain killed his brother 
in Genesis chapter 4, the fourth book of the Bible, so many trials, so many, you know, unpleasant experiences in the fourth book of the Bible, and so many deaths also. Persecution started in Acts chapter 4 for the early church. As when they were imprisoned and beaten for the first time after, yeah, for the first time as <laughs> those who serve Jesus Christ, as followers of Jesus. And they got there and they prayed until the place shook where they were. That's a place of trial and tribulation. Ezra chapter 4, Nehemiah chapter 4, trials and tribulations. The temptations of Jesus, Matthew 4, Luke chapter 4, is a spiritual hot season. Mark chapter 4, the disciples were, you know, they, a storm came against Jesus and disciples in Mark chapter 4. So this is a spiritual hot season. In Esther chapter 4, Ezra, Esther said to Mordecai, you go and fast with the men who are with you. I and the uh, maidens who are with me will fast, and after that I will go to sing, see the king, if I perish, I perish. So it's a time to seek God. It's a time to look up to God. It's like God, our eyes are on you. The enemy comes so strong in this season with temptation, with trials, that all that the saint needs to do is to just look up to God and pray. Esther and Mordecai prayed in chapter 4. In Acts chapter 4, the church prayed, the disciples prayed until the building shook. Because it's like our eyes are on you. We can't take our eyes away. We're looking up to you, Lord. We're looking up to you. Our eyes are on you. Our eyes are on you. When you read Job, you would see the same thing in Job 19. Job 19, then Job answered and said, How long will you torment me, my soul, and break me in pieces with words. These ten times you have reproached me. You are not ashamed that you have wronged me. And Job said, I, if I cry out concerning wrong, I'm not heard. If I cry aloud, there is no justice. You know, Job says in verse 8, He has faced up my way so that I cannot pass. He has set darkness in my paths. He has stripped me of my glory and taken the crown from my head. He breaks me down on every side and I am gone. My hope he has uprooted like a tree. He has also kindled his wrath against me. And he counts me as one of his enemies. His troops come together and build up their road against me. They encamp all around my tent. He has removed my brothers far from me, and my acquaintances are completely estranged from me. My relatives have failed. My close friends have forgotten me. Those who dwell in my house and my servants count me as a stranger. I am an alien in their sight. I call my servant, but he gives me no answer. I beg him with my mouth, my breath is offensive to my wife, and I am repulsive to the children of my own body. Even young children despise me. I arise and they speak against me. All my close friends abhor me, and those whom I love have turned against me. <laughs> my bone clings to my skin and to my flesh. And I have escaped by the skin of my tree. Have pity on me, have pity on me, O oh, you, my friends, for the hand of God has struck me. Why do you persecute me as God does and are not satisfied with my flesh? Oh, that my words were written or that they were inscribed in a book, that they were engraved in a rock with an iron pen and, and lead forever. 
See the troubles that Job went through. Verse 25, he said, For I know that my Redeemer lives, and he shall stand at the last on the earth. Now, this is just Job 9. By the time you read 20 to um, 24, you see the kind of experience that Job went through. That's like what happens in the thoughts. Now, remember that the book of Job is a fourth season book. It's the 18th book of the Bible. So all of it is it's like about pain, is you know, is agony, is it's just a tough. Job was in a spiritual hot season. It was a spiritual hot season. So that's why the psalmist says, Our eyes are on you as servants look to their master. And as maidens look to their mistress, our eyes are on you. And I want you to know that God is going to show up to as many as are looking up to him and saying, Lord, where are you? Lord, we need your help. Lord, we need your intervention. Lord, we need your deliverance. Lord, we need salvation. Lord, we want you to show up. That's how the apostles prayed in Acts chapter 4. They prayed, Sovereign Lord. Sovereign Lord, I think we need to read that and close with it. Um, Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4. And then um, about verse 28. Or oh, not verse 28. Okay. <clears throat> verse 23. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they had heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord and said, O oh Lord, you are God, who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David have said, Why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers have gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant, Jesus, whom you anointed both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, we are gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word. By stretching out your hand to heal, and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And the Bible said in verse 31, And when they had prayed, the place where they assembled together was shaken, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and spoke the word of God with boldness. Our eyes are on you. That's what the people said you know, in Psalm 122. Our eyes are on you. We're looking up to you, Lord. We're looking up to you. We're waiting for you. know, men, we usually wait for, we wait for lights. On the fourth day of creation, the lights, when the sun is out, we know, okay, morning is coming. When the moon is coming, it tells us something. So the psalmist says, our eyes are on you. God does not disappoint our prayer. As you lift up your eyes this season, to God, he will not fail. He will not disappoint. He will show up. As he answered in time past, he will answer again. And I pray that the Lord will bless you, bless your day one, two, three, and give you peace on this day. And in the name of Jesus, darkness will not overtake you. The luminaries of God will assist you, will help you, will be they are available for you. The light from the word of God, light from the Holy Spirit and counsel from the wise company of the wise on earth. God bless you and have a pleasant day. In Jesus' name, amen.